Hello and welcome to this training video about identifying dark data with Veritas Data Insight. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So what is dark data? Well here's a definition by Gartner. It's information assets that organisations collect, process and store in the course of their regular business activity but generally fail to use for other purposes. Examples of dark data are stale data, so people create more copies of a spreadsheet and the old ones are still around. Inactive data, so data that's just not been accessed for a number of years. Orphan data, so people leave the organisation, they've created a whole load of data um, and we don't know whether it's required anymore. Finally, duplicate data, when multiple copies of the same file are created, maybe in different places. So how can Data Insight help with this? Well, it can identify and manage inactive duplicate and orphan data. And it can do that mainly using the data lifecycle reports and custom reports, which is the key part of the product. I'm going to demonstrate some of those in a minute. In terms of managing data, that's really by the remediation actions that we can find on the data lifecycle reports. So you can see you can take action on data generated by the report by archiving it using Enterprise Vault or a custom action, a script that you write, for instance, to compress files, move them to cloud storage and so on. You'll notice on the previous slide that one of the ways we can manage data is using Enterprise Vault. So Data Insight can be integrated with Enterprise Vault File System Archiving version 10.04 and higher. Files can be archived from the workspace and from remediation actions in the data lifecycle reports. It's very important to understand that everything needs to be already available in EV to accept the files for archiving. What I mean by that is we have to have created the file server targets, the volume targets. We also need to have created the archive points for, for all the areas where we're going to be doing archiving from Data Insight. If they're not available, then the archiving request from Data Insight will fail. When archiving is triggered from Data Insight, use the API. And it's important to understand it ignores the volume and folder policies. So if I request to archive a file, say, a Word document, and my volume policy doesn't contain a rule to archive Word documents, th this will archive that Word document because it ignores that volume policy. If you request a shortcut to be created when you archive from Data Insight, it's important to understand that only placeholder shortcuts be created, not internet shortcuts, and it will ignore the setting within the volume or folder policy. So in order to integrate Data Insight with EVFSA, you need to add one Enterprise Vault server per site to Data Insight. In reality, most organizations only have one Enterprise Vault site, so you only need to add one EV server. I'll show this in more detail when I do a demonstration. You also need to check the filer mappings. So one thing that's available from Veritas Partners is what we call a dark data assessment. This uses Data Insight to identify dark data in the production environment. Usually scope is limited to one or two filers and to scanning only. The main tools used are the Data Insight reports, which I'm going to demonstrate shortly. Of course, this may then lead to a full imp implementation of Data Insight and or file system archiving. If you are interested in more details, then contact Adeptech. So I'm now going to do a demonstration about how to identify dark data using Data Insight. In this demonstration, we're going to look at the data management use case for Veritas Data Insight and also look at how we can manage inactive data using Enterprise Vault. So first thing I'm going to do is set up my connection to Enterprise Vault. So as you can see, I'm in the Data Insight Management Console and I'm on the Settings tab here. So what I need to do is to go down here and find Data Management. And then I can add the new EV server. Type in the IP address. 
The bizarre thing is that you can't use hostname here, it has to be IP address. Then specify the TCP port to connect to Enterprise Vault. The two options here are port 80, which would be by default, or if you've changed your site to use SSL, then you'd put in 443. And then you need to have a logon credential, which would be a save credential. I've already added the EV service account as a save credential and its password. So I or it's always a good idea to click the test credentials button to check that I can communicate. So that's good. It can communicate to the EV server on this port using this account. So I can then save that. Once the EV server has been saved, I need to go on to add filer mappings at least once and it will populate this table. So on the left hand side, we've got the name of the filers as they are within Data Insight. And it's matched them up to the same filers that are also configured within Enterprise Vault. And the server names do need to be the same. Now in 99% of the time they will be. If they don't actually exactly match up, so I'm using an alias for some reason here, then I need to change the name here. I can type in this field to make sure it matches here. If I don't do that, then archiving will fail. So let's now go to the workspace. So the workspace is, how can I put it, moderately useful for managing data or looking at inactive data. We do have a um, storage view on the dashboard and it shows me the number of files, the inactive files, the inactive size. So I can make sort of implications here that I've got inactive files within the address share. If I want to drill down further, then I'd go to the expand profile here. Probably the most useful thing is folder activity and specifically the inactive uh, subfolders. So within this share, the address share, you can see that I have a number of inactive folders. In fact, they've been inactive for a long period of time. So if I can, you know, I can change this period of time. Uh, and these two folders have been inactive for over a year. I could then select these folders and archive them uh, directly to Enterprise Vault. But I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So let's just collapse this profile again, because I want to go back into the HR share and show you something else. So if I expand this out and go into payroll here, I can select these files here and choose actions, archive. Uh, so it's picked up the retention categories from my enterprise vault system. And in terms of post-processing, I can delete the file, which is probably is the best use case. It's a very old file. It's been active for a long period of time. Just want to get rid of it from the end system. Obviously, I've got an archive uh, copy of it. But in this case, I'm going to create a shortcut because we'll come back to this later. Hopefully see that it's changed into a shortcut. So click OK. And you can see it says that the archive action has been uh, submitted successfully. But the best way of seeing inactive data within Data Insight is use the reports and specifically the data lifecycle reports, which are down here. So there are four data lifecycle reports. We've got inactive data by file group. So one of the use cases would be to find inactive PST files on your file servers. Data aging, which is a great one to see what I call the data landscape. So it's done in buckets. I'll demonstrate this one in a minute. So the amount of files that are between 0 and 6 months, 6 months and 12 months and so on. Inactive data by owner. So this is based on that calculated inferred data owner that Data Insight uh, calculates for you. So that you can actually go and you know ask questions of these particular owners about whether or not these files are still required. And the inactive folders, which is equivalent to what I've just shown you in the workspace, but now done as a report. So let's start with the data aging report and click create report. I'm just going to call it data landscape on server one. And I'm going to create an HTML report. So 
So it's got 12 monk buckets here. I'm going to change the bucket size here to uh, three months. The buckets need to be the same size. You can't have different size buckets, otherwise it won't work. Uh, I'm going to choose the whole server. And that's all I need to, to look at, actually. So I'm going to do save and run. To, to run the report and it'll just take a short while to complete okay so refresh the view and then let's look at the HTML version I've actually got a, an Excel version as well but I'm going to just use this one So you can see here, I've got most of my data is between naught and three months. Okay, and then you've got this segment, which is older than 12 months. Uh, and in my particular lab environment, I don't have that much data, but you can see how powerful this would be in a production environment to see it with your different buckets, you can do different reports with different bucket sizes to get that view of the, the data landscape. If you were to do it, ask for, for a dark data assessment, this is one of the reports that will be key in understanding the landscape in your particular environment. Uh, you can see here our clickable links will take me directly and I can see the amount of data uh, by shares on the filer so I can drill down to much more detail even down to the individual files which is so it's a very can be a very detailed report obviously in a, in a production environment the other report i want to show you is this inactive folders So I'm actually going to do a very short period because I want to get some results out here. So I'm going to just say seven days. Obviously, that would be a bit crazy in a production environment. And I'm just going to choose my server and save and run. So if I refresh this, and I can open up the report. So this shows me all the inactive folders on the server. It also shows me user accounts on there and so on. So a lot of information in here. Now what I can do is to then pass this information on to Enterprise Vault. What I mean is all the files that have been identified, or in this particular case folders, all the folders have been identified by this report. I can then make a request for the files within those folders to be archived by Enterprise Vault. So let's have a look at how we would do that. So if I go back into the report again, edit it, and this time if I go onto the remediation tab, I can say take action on data generated by the report. So the folders that are identified by this report as being inactive over the period we specified to be archived by Enterprise Vault according to a particular retention category and particular post-processing action, for instance, uh, delete file. And if I was to do save and run now, that would actually do the post-processing and delete those files. I'm not actually going to do that in this case because I don't actually want to delete all these files from my environment. We obviously get the, the hang of how it would go. What I want to finish off with is uh, just going into here and seeing where those files have been archived. So we go into the HR share and then under payroll. And you can see these little crosses here now. And what that indicates is these files have now been archived. They are, have got the offline file attribute, which indicates they've been archived by Enterprise Vault File System Archiving. So that brings the end of this demonstration of how to use Data Insight for the data management use case or finding dark data within your environment.